Frank W. Fenno Golden Voyage of the Trout During the turbulence of World War II, one exceptional narrative of heroism and inventiveness emerged, the Golden Voyage of the USS Trout. In the early months of 1942, as the Pacific Theater burned with fury, Lieutenant Commander Frank Wesley Fenno embarked on a daring expedition that would permanently mark his name in naval history. Against the backdrop of a beleaguered Philippines, where General Douglas MacArthur and President Manuel L. Quezon's forces were on the verge of defeat, the USS Trout set sail on a risky journey. Laden with a cargo of enormous value, 3,500 rounds of high-altitude anti-aircraft cannon and a hidden payload of gold, the submarine entered enemy-controlled waters with one goal in mind, to resupply Corregidor's beleaguered defenders. From the horrific depths of Manila Bay to the perilous vastness of the Pacific Ocean, the trout faced a maze of danger, eluding enemy patrols and suffering unrelenting airstrikes. Despite the confusion and uncertainty, Fenno and his brave team remained undeterred, their determination unflinching in the face of tremendous obstacles. As the trout emerged victorious from its fiery furnace, its cargo safely delivered, and its crew acclaimed as heroes, the world witnessed a triumph of daring and determination. From the depths of sorrow sprang a light of hope, a monument to the unbreakable spirit of people who dare to defy the darkness of war. In the following narrative, we dig into the incredible story of the USS Trout, following its treacherous journey from the Pacific to the shores of history. We unearth the unseen story of bravery, sacrifice, and perseverance that distinguished this iconic vessel and its valiant crew using eyewitness recollections and archival archives. Join us on a trip of discovery that reveals the ageless principles of respect, devotion, and the unwavering spirit of America's finest. Frank W. Fenno Golden Voyage of the Trout As the days progressed into weeks and weeks into months, the war-torn landscape of Luzon revealed a heartbreaking story of endurance and sacrifice. From the sun-baked plains to the mist-shrouded mountains, every inch of terrain was fought over in a desperate struggle for existence. General Wainwright's once proud forces were reduced and outgunned, and he faced an enemy with seemingly limitless resources and endless will. Despite the overwhelming odds, he refused to give up, inspiring his men with words of courage and determination even as their supplies ran low and their morale dipped. The streets of Manila, once a thriving metropolis, turned scarlet with blood as Japanese troops struggled with persistent pockets of resistance. Buildings that had endured for centuries were reduced to ruin, their shattered facade serving as silent witnesses to the savagery of war. Despite the chaos and sorrow, flashes of heroism and togetherness showed through. Men and women from all walks of life banded together, their shared struggle forming relationships that went beyond race, creed, and nationality. In the face of unspeakable adversity, they found strength in one another deriving confidence from knowing they were not alone in their struggle. Outside the city boundaries, in the difficult terrain of the countryside, guerrilla fighters launched a fierce assault against the occupying troops. Armed with little more than their wits and a passionate will to resist, they attacked the enemy from the shadows, disrupting supply lines. And causing turmoil behind enemy lines. However, with every win, several losses were experienced. Families are torn apart, homes are wrecked, and lives are irreparably damaged. Despite this, the Filipino people's spirit remained unbroken, and their perseverance served as a light of hope in the darkest of times. As the war progressed, the once impenetrable mask of Japanese invincibility began to erode. Supplies became short, morale dropped, and rumors of discontent circulated throughout the ranks. Then, on the horizon, a ray of hope emerged. Rumors spread about an allied counteroffensive, a bold plan to reclaim the Philippines and drive the Japanese invaders from their beaches, for the battered and bruised but unbowed defenders of Luzon, it was a gleam of hope in a sea of despair. And, despite the fact that the path ahead would be long and dangerous, they were determined to fight for their homes, families, and the freedom of their beloved land. 
Before the Philippine capital city of Manila was reluctantly declared an open city, its streets booming with the mournful footfall of departing soldiers and the nervous whispering of civilians, General Douglas MacArthur, a figure synonymous with American military power, made a disastrous choice. With the threat of Japanese invasion loomed, MacArthur and his army conducted a strategic retreat to the island fortress of Corregidor, a bastion of defiance against the advancing tide of war. Corregidor, nestled stubbornly in the waters of Manila Bay, represented resilience and determination in the face of enormous difficulties. Despite its small size, reaching only a mile and a half at its widest point, the rocky, tadpole-shaped island boasted tremendous defenses, its modest three-square-mile area was dotted with solid rock and sandbagged emplacements, and a convoluted network of tunnels acted as a large command post, shielding MacArthur and his staff from the ferocity of battle. Corregidor, guarded by three miles of open ocean on its northern side, held a key vantage point with a panoramic view of Manila Bay and the surrounding coastline. Even as MacArthur found safety within its fortified walls, the Japanese forces continued their inexorable push across the Bataan Peninsula, a striking reminder of the ever-present menace. Despite the gallant efforts of the Filipino and American defenders, who battled with unwavering determination against overwhelming odds, the Japanese attack was relentless, wave after wave of enemy troops rushed into Bataan's defenses, buoyed by the promise of victory and a strong belief in their own invincibility. Despite the chaos and devastation of war, hope remained tenacious in the hearts of individuals who refused to succumb to despair. From the blood-soaked trenches of Bataan to the reinforced bunkers of Corregidor, the spirit of resistance shone brightly, a light of defiance against the looming gloom. However, as the days turned into weeks and then months, the harsh realities of war began to take their toll. Food and supplies became scarce, and disease and despair spread like wildfire among the hapless defenders. Corregidor was not just a strategic stronghold for General Douglas MacArthur and his struggling command, but also a symbol of optimism in a globe devoured by darkness. Even if the shadows of doubt loomed huge on the horizon, they knew that as long as one spark of resistance persisted, the flame of liberty would never go out. Corregidor stood out as an identifiable landmark from above, its rough lines carved starkly against the turquoise Pacific Ocean. To the keen eyes of Japanese bombers soaring overhead, the island fortress represented a delectable prize, a strategic target waiting to be taken. And when intelligence learned of General Douglas MacArthur's presence on the island, together with his esteemed staff and leadership, Corregidor quickly rose to the top of the enemy's target list. Despite its robust defenses and strong fortifications, Corregidor was not immune to the unrelenting bombardment of Japanese air force, with each passing day, the island's anti-aircraft batteries, formerly staunch defenders against the onslaught of enemy bombers, found itself on the verge of collapse. The skies, once alive with the thunderous boom of gunfire and the bitter odor of cordite, were now echoed by the ominous drone of incoming aircraft, their cargoes ready to rain death and ruin on the hapless defenders below. Corregidor's anti-aircraft batteries had proven to be formidable adversaries in the early days of the conflict, with their deadly accuracy sending no less than 13 enemy bombers hurtling to the ocean depths in a display of defiance that terrified Japanese air crews. However, as the days passed into weeks and weeks into months, the strain of relentless bombardment began to take its toll, dulling their formerly razor-sharp reflexes due to tiredness and decreasing resources. Realizing their dangerous situation, the defenders of Corregidor voiced a frantic plea for supplies, their voices echoing across the great length of the Pacific to the shores of Pearl Harbor. However, even as their message was sent into the ether, the specter of impending catastrophe hung heavy in the air, threatening to destroy Corregidor to nothing more than a blazing heap of wreckage and ash. For the brave souls who called Corregidor home, each day brought the bleak shadow of uncertainty, their hopes and fears blending in a stormy sea of doubt. And yet, in the face of seemingly insurmountable obstacles, they refused to give up, their steadfast resolve a tribute to the indestructible spirit of the human soul in the darkest of times. Following the tragic attack on Pearl Harbor, 
The United States Pacific Fleet was confronted with the astonishing scale of its casualties. With every battleship in the Pacific sunk or badly damaged, and numerous additional vessels damaged or destroyed, the once mighty naval force was broken and weak. In the face of such devastation, reinforcing and resupplying the faraway Philippine Defense Force appeared an overwhelming job, exacerbated by Japan's ironclad grip on the Pacific. As Japanese forces tightened their grasp on the Bataan Peninsula, General Wainwright's troops were caught in a desperate struggle for survival. They were on the verge of weariness and defeat after being cut off from critical supply routes and facing a never-ending barrage of enemy fire, with each passing day, the fear of famine became larger, threatening to extinguish the last shred of hope among the beleaguered defenders. Meanwhile, the cannons of Corregidor, long a sign of unwavering determination, confronted the somber prospect of oncoming stillness. Deprived of the essential supplies required to sustain their fortifications, the island's stronghold teetered on the verge of collapse, its fate hanging perilously in the balance. Without the ability to replenish their decreasing supplies, the defenders of Corregidor faced the bleak prospect of falling easy prey for the unrelenting Japanese onslaught. In the dangerous waters of the Pacific, any attempt to penetrate the enemy's powerful defenses was greeted with rapid and merciless retaliation. American ships, whether on the surface or in the air, faced devastation at every step, their brave attempts to resupply the Philippine islands foiled by the Japanese and Navy's overwhelming force. In this critical hour of need, the Navy turned to the USS Trout, SS-202, a submarine unlike any others. The crew of the Trout set out on a risky mission to deliver essential supplies to the besieged defenders of Corregidor. They braved the hazardous waters of the Pacific with pure determination and unyielding courage, and their courageous quest served as a light of hope in a world ravaged by darkness. Cargo Sub Lieutenant Commander Frank Wesley Fenno was pushed into the furnace of war, although belatedly, as the events of December 7, 1941, permanently altered the course of history. While the world was reeling from the shockwaves of the Japanese attack on Pearl Harbor, Fenno's submarine, the illustrious USS Trout, was patrolling the calm waters around Midway, far from the chaos developing in the Pacific. From the relative safety of his submarine's confines, Fenno witnessed the terrifying spectacle of battle as enemy ships returned to Midway, their foreboding shadows looming on the horizon like avenging angels of destruction. Despite his desire to act, Fenno could only watch helplessly from a distance, his vessel too far away to assist the beleaguered defenders. Fenno and his crew returned to Pearl Harbor to refuel and rearm after completing what had unexpectedly become the USS Trout's maiden war patrol, and were met with a sobering sight. Their once proud battleship, stripped of almost all extraneous accessories, sat unarmed and vulnerable, her torpedo tubes ominously empty except for a single weapon nestled within each chamber. It was a vivid reminder of the risky endeavor that lay ahead, one cloaked in mystery and laden with danger. Fenno's first Navy Cross Award disclosed the exact purpose of their mission, albeit in cryptic and mysterious words. For an exceptionally meritorious service in a duty of great responsibility, Fenno and the crew of the USS Trout proceeded on a risky voyage into enemy-controlled waters on behalf of the U.S. War Department. Laden with a valuable cargo whose nature remained unknown, they risked the perilous depths of the Pacific, their only weapons against the advancing tide of war. Despite the tremendous odds, Fenno and his gallant crew proved themselves capable of the task. On February 10, 1942, as they made their treacherous return to Pearl Harbor, fate intervened in the guise of a 5,000-ton enemy cargo vessel, its presence a striking reminder of the constant danger lurking beneath the seas. Undaunted, the USS Trout rushed into action, its torpedoes hitting their target and sinking the opposing ship. But their ordeal wasn't done. Soon after dispatching their quarry, they were attacked by an enemy patrol craft, its torpedoes slashing through the water with deadly precision. Nonetheless, Fenno and his brave crew refused to give up, meeting force with force as they turned the tables on their adversary, their tenacity unyielding even in the face of fatal danger. 
And thus, against all chances, the USS Trout emerged victorious, its valuable cargo intact and its crew unharmed, a tribute to the unbreakable spirit of those who dare to defy the darkness of war. Their daring deeds would be permanently recorded in naval history, as a tribute to the bravery and sacrifice of those who sail beneath the waves. The voyage of the USS Trout, albeit shrouded in secrecy and overshadowed by the larger picture of war, came to represent the American military's inventiveness and resilience in the face of hardship. Fenno and his crew experienced hardship and sacrifice, as well as brotherhood and fortitude that I end the merciless vastness of the Pacific, where the line between life and death was carved by the shifting currents of fate, they stood as a tribute to the everlasting spirit of the human soul in the furnace of war. The story of the USS Trout's covert mission to transfer critical anti-aircraft ammunition to the Corregidor defenders exemplifies Lieutenant Commander Frank Wesley Fenno and his gallant crew's ingenuity, heroism, and unflinching commitment. In the furnace of war, when every choice held the weight of life or death, they rose to the occasion with incredible courage and determination. As the sun rose over the calm waters of Pearl Harbor on that tragic day in January 1942, the USS Trout glided silently beneath the waves, her hull cutting through the inky depths with a sense of purpose that belied the deadly nature of her mission. The submarine, armed with 3,500 rounds of high-altitude anti-aircraft cannon, carried the hopes and prayers of countless people who gazed to the sky above Corregidor with terror and apprehension. Fenno and his crew faced an unclear and dangerous trip ahead. With enemy forces patrolling the Pacific waters like hungry wolves, every time spent on the surface was a gamble with fate, while the submarine's cramped quarters provided little reprieve from the constant prospect of discovery and devastation. Despite the insurmountable odds heaped against them, the crew of the USS Trout pressed on with unyielding resolve, their hearts filled with a burning determination to complete their mission. With a combination of navigational expertise, tactical savvy, and sheer nerve, they traversed the dangerous seas of enemy territory with near-miraculous accuracy. Along the trip, they encountered several hurdles and challenges, ranging from enemy patrols to submerged perils, each of which tested their mettle and pushed them to their limits of endurance. Throughout it all, Fenno and his crew stayed loyal in their commitment to overcome whatever barriers stood in their way, their bond forged in the fires of adversity stronger than steel. Finally, on the night of February 3, 1942, after weeks of arduous travel and nerve-wracking tension, the USS Trout arrived off the coast of Corregidor. Under the cover of darkness, with the enemy completely unaware, the submarine established a covert meeting with an escort motor torpedo boat, whose crew safely escorted them through the treacherous waters to their final destination. And there, amidst the shattered relics of battle and the impending threat of enemy attack, the USS Trout unloaded her valuable cargo of anti-aircraft artillery ammunition, a beacon of light in a world ravaged by darkness. For Corregidor's defenders, it was a lifeline of salvation, a symbol of the unbreakable spirit of resistance that burned brightly within them. In the annals of naval history, the story of the USS Trout and her brave crew will be remembered as a tribute to the force of human courage and resilience in the face of enormous hardship. Their journey was laden with hazard and uncertainty, yet they never wavered in their dedication to duty, honor, and nation. And, while the waters of the Pacific have since calmed, their legacy as freedom fighters will live on for future years. The perilous and unpredictable journey of the USS Trout through the Pacific Ocean paled in comparison to the formidable task of sneaking unnoticed into the strongly guarded limits of Manila Bay. The risks were tenfold larger in the convoluted waterways patrolled by hostile surface ships and observed by watchful Japanese aircraft. Lieutenant Commander Frank Wesley Fenno and his brave crew set out on their daring mission under cover of darkness every nerve on edge and every sense acutely aware of the ever-present possibility of danger. As they traversed the murky waters of Manila Bay, every ripple and sound threatened to reveal their existence to the enemy, whose vigilant eyes watched the horizon for any indication of intrusion. Despite the overwhelming odds heaped against them, the USS Trout slipped under the enemy's radar, 
her sleek hull floating softly across the dark waters like a phantom in the night. With nerves of steel and nerves of steel and nerves of steel, Fenno Fenno and his crew expertly navigated their vessel beyond the opposing cordon, their activities shrouded in stealth and darkness. The USS Trout did not surface in Manila Bay's strongly guarded harbor until 7.40 p.m., a monument to her crew's competence and determination. Even as they emerged from the depths, the threat of detection loomed large, throwing doubt on their goal. Ten minutes later, as the night wrapped them in its inky grasp, Fenno made contact with patrol boat 43, PT-43, its presence a welcome sight amidst the swirling mists of battle. At the helm stood a guy whose look belied his true nature, a bearded officer who resembled a swashbuckling pirate rather than a U.S. Navy sailor. This grizzled figure was Lieutenant John Duncan Bulkley, a legendary figure in naval history. For two months, he and his small squadron fought a desperate struggle against the Japanese, garnering the admiration of both friends and foes. Bulkley, who had already received the Navy Cross, demonstrated unrivaled bravery, earning him two Army Distinguished Service Crosses and a place in the pantheon of naval heroes. Fenno and Bulkley exchanged greetings in the moonlight, and a sense of camaraderie and mutual respect developed between them. Despite coming from different worlds and fighting on various fronts, they shared a common relationship forged in the crucible of war, one that transcended rank, nationality, and circumstance. And so, amidst the swirling mists of Manila Bay, two men stood together in defiance of tyranny and injustice, their spirits unbroken and their resolve unwavering. For in the furnace of war, when every moment was loaded with danger and every choice held the weight of life or death, they realized that only by working together could they expect to triumph over the forces of darkness that threatened to consume them. As Lieutenant Commander Frank Wesley Fenno and his crew finished unloading the much-needed artillery rounds onto Corregidor's piers, a sense of urgency persisted. With each round hauled ashore by the Bucket Brigade's relentless efforts, the USS Trout climbed steadily higher in the water, its once imposing silhouette now betraying the enormous burden it had borne. However, as the last of the cargo was unloaded and the Corregidor docks grew silent, Fenno was confronted with a new and critical issue, ballast. With the weight of the artillery shells removed from the submarine's hold, Fenno was well aware that without appropriate ballast, the trout would be unable to submerge properly for its risky return journey home. Desperate for a solution, Fenno quickly requested 25 tons of rock and sandbags to restore the lost ballast. However, his plea went unheard because every possible resource was already being used to defend the beleaguered island fortress. Every boulder, every bag of sand, was thought necessary for bolstering the defensive positions that served as the final line of protection against the enemy's unrelenting onslaught. Fenno faced a seemingly insurmountable obstacle. Faced with this seemingly insurmountable challenge, Fenno and his crew were compelled to think outside the box in their search for a solution. Following much study and discussion, a bold strategy was developed, which would eventually convert the Trout's return trip to Pearl Harbor into one of the most astounding accomplishments in naval history. Fenno and his crew went out to work with newfound determination once their bold proposal was approved. Drawing on their inventiveness and resourcefulness, they created a makeshift solution to their ballast problem that required using the very cargo they had brought to Corregidor, 3,500 rounds of artillery. In a well-planned operation, the Trout's crew systematically placed artillery shells throughout the submarine's hull, thereby redistributing weight and restoring the balance required for proper submersion. Though unorthodox, this homemade ballast proved to be critical to their safety, allowing the trout to cross the hazardous waters of the Pacific and successfully return to Pearl Harbor. As the USS Trout set sail on its return mission, its hull heavy with both duty and homemade ballast, Fenno and his crew started on a voyage that would put their mettle to the test like never before. Nonetheless, encouraged by their unshakable dedication and inventiveness, they tackled the challenges ahead with courage and commitment, knowing they were carrying the indomitable spirit of those who dared to fight the odds in the cause of freedom and justice.
And while they navigated the turbulent waters of war, they made an indelible mark on history, demonstrating the power of innovation and tenacity in the face of adversity. On December 24, 1941, a watershed moment in history occurred as the threat of defeat and the inevitable loss of the Philippine Islands hung over everyone. As Japanese forces tightened their grip on the archipelago, General Douglas MacArthur, the renowned American military leader, took the tragic decision to leave Manila and move his headquarters to the fortified bastion of Corregidor. However, he was not alone on this risky expedition. Philippine President Manuel L. Quezon accompanied General MacArthur on his journey to Corregidor. Recognizing the gravity of the situation, Quezon made the decisive move of relocating the seat of government to the island fortress, where he could stand beside MacArthur in the face of adversity. In the tumultuous days that followed, a tableau of urgency and determination unfolded against the backdrop of uncertainty and danger. Under the watchful eye of the advancing Japanese forces, small boats braved the perilous seas of Manila Bay to transport MacArthur, Quezon, their families, staff, and necessary goods to the Malinta Tunnel on Corregidor. This brave evacuation, carried out under persistent enemy fire, exemplified the resilience and grit of individuals who refused to give up in the face of overwhelming odds. As these boats negotiated the treacherous waters, they carried not only their passengers' physical presence, but also the weight of their hopes, goals, and aspirations for a better tomorrow. However, despite the chaos and uncertainty of war, these vessels carried another extremely valuable cargo, documents, diplomatic papers, securities, and, probably most importantly, gold. As emblems of national sovereignty and economic stability, these priceless treasures were entrusted to people who tried to protect them from the flow of war and adversity. The evacuation of MacArthur, Quezon, and their entourage in the crucible of war, where every decision held the weight of life or death, was a testament to the tenacious spirit of those who refused to give in to despair. It was a moment of resistance in the face of overwhelming gloom, a ray of hope amid the tempest of war. As they sought safety under the Malinta Tunnel's protective embrace, MacArthur, Quezon, and his friends were unified in their desire to defy tyranny and defend the ideas of liberty and democracy. Their trek to Corregidor would go down in history as a symbol of heroism, perseverance, and the unwavering spirit of those who dared to fight the odds in the name of liberty and justice. The decision to evacuate to Corregidor was not taken lightly. It sprang from need and a clear knowledge of the precarious circumstances in which the Philippine island defenders find themselves. With the Japanese Imperial Army marching quickly and the fall of Manila approaching, MacArthur and Quezon recognized that their presence on the front lines was critical to morale and leadership. In the days preceding up to their departure, preparations were conducted in complete secrecy. Small boats were prepared, supplies were gathered, and evacuation plans were drafted. Despite the confusion and uncertainty, individuals involved had a strong sense of determination. They knew the trek ahead would be dangerous, but they also recognized the gravity of their task. As the boats crossed Manila Bay, they were met by sporadic gunfire from Japanese soldiers. Despite the risky conditions, they persevered, motivated by a sense of responsibility and the understanding that their acts could influence the fate of the war. And as they arrived at the Malinta Tunnel, they exhaled a collective sigh of relief, knowing that they had finished the first stage of their trek to Corregidor. Once within the tunnel, MacArthur, Quezon, and his comrades immediately established a provisional seat of government. Offices were set up, communications were constructed, and plans for the island fortress defense were developed. Despite the hustle and bustle of preparations, there was a sense of unease in the air. They knew the struggle for Corregidor would be harsh and unforgiving, with the fate of the Philippine Islands hanging in the balance. In the days that followed, as Japanese forces closed in on Corregidor, MacArthur and Quezon remained steadfast in their vow to defend the island bastion until the end. They were aware that the world's attention was focused on them, and that the outcome of the battle would have far-reaching consequences for the direction of the war. 
As the Japanese bombardment intensified and the situation became more serious, MacArthur and Quezon took the agonizing choice to evacuate Corregidor. Nonetheless, as they left the island fortress, they stayed steadfast in their dedication to the cause of freedom and democracy. And though they may have left Corregidor behind, their legacy will live on in the hearts. As the threat of Japanese invasion loomed over the Philippine Islands, those tasked with protecting the country's economic integrity faced a critical dilemma. The Philippine economy's treasury, a symbol of wealth and stability, was susceptible to the looming prospect of enemy occupation. With the very real risk of the nation's wealth falling into Japanese hands, a clear course of action was required to avoid more devastation and save crucial resources. The respected High Commissioner to the Philippine Islands, Francis B. Sayer, faced the arduous responsibility of protecting the country's economic assets from enemy appropriation under the authority granted to him by the First War Powers Act recognizing the grave consequences of allowing the treasury to be seized by the invading Japanese soldiers, Sayer made a catastrophic decision. Destroy millions of dollars in currency and financial assets. Sayer meticulously directed the burning of $3 million in American currency, $28 million in Philippine paper currency, and $38 million in treasury checks. Every bill and note bear witness to the sacrifices made in the sake of preserving the country's sovereignty and economic stability. Each destroyed bill's serial number was scrupulously documented, demonstrating the exquisite attention to detail that distinguished this colossal operation. Despite the destruction, one crucial asset remained unaffected, 20 tons of Philippine gold and silver. Recognizing the difficulties of reducing these valuable metals to ash, Sayer delegated their custody to his executive assistant and financial advisor, Woodbury Willoughby. Under Willoughby's watchful eye, the gold and silver were moved to the fortified walls of Corregidor, where they would be safe from the enemy's grasp. However, this move was more than just a temporary remedy, it was a deliberate contingency plan for preserving the nation's wealth. If things did not improve and the possibility of Japanese occupation remained, a final, dramatic move was planned, dropping the gold and silver into deep sea, out of reach of enemy rescue efforts. This ultimate act of defiance would ensure that, even in the face of loss, the Philippines' economic heart remained beyond the reach of dictatorship. In the furnace of war, where every decision had far-reaching effects, the preservation of the country's economic assets demonstrated the unflinching determination of those charged with its stewardship. Through their foresight, determination, and sacrifice, they assured that the flame of hope would burn even in the darkest days of war. And, as the echoes of war resounded across the Pacific, the spirit of resistance and defiance symbolized in the preservation of the Philippine treasury would serve as a beacon of valor and fortitude for future generations. Lieutenant Commander Frank Fenno and his crew on board the USS Trout faced a major challenge in the middle of wartime chaos. Stranded in enemy-controlled waters with insufficient ballast to assure the safe submersion of their submarine, they faced the real danger of being unable to negotiate the perilous journey home. However, in a stroke of genius inspired by desperation, Fenno devised a daring strategy that would transform ordinary goods into a lifeline of exceptional significance, gold. As the crew of the Trout began emptying the artillery rounds from their vessel, their brains raced with the urgent need to solve their ballast problem. Fenno's initial request for rock and sand had been denied, leaving them with little options to resolve their situation. However, in an act of inspired ingenuity, Fenno's attention fell on the consignment of gold bullion kept on Corregidor, a resource of enormous value that could perhaps serve as a replacement for the missing ballast. With the acceptance of their audacious plan, the crew jumped into action with a reinvigorated feeling of mission. The Bucket Brigade, which had previously been charged with unloading artillery shells, now focused their efforts on a new goal transferring gold bullion into the submarine's belly with astonishing efficiency, they created a homemade conveyor belt system to transfer bar after bar of Philippine gold down their ranks and into the waiting arms of the submarine's crew. Each 40-pound gold bar, at $23,000, 
was not only a valuable item but also an essential component in their existence. As the crew carefully stored each bar within the submarine, they were vividly aware of the varied implications of their actions. Not only were they getting a precious item with the potential to ensure their financial future, but they were also obtaining the weight required to submerge their vessel and navigate the treacherous waters ahead. In the furnace of battle, where every decision had serious ramifications, the decision to use gold as temporary ballast was a calculated risk, one that held the possibility of redemption among the turmoil of combat. As the trout began its perilous journey home, its hull heavy with both duty and valuable metal, Fenno and his crew were determined to defy the odds and face whatever hardships lie ahead. And as they traversed the perilous waters of the Pacific, they did so with an unyielding determination to triumph against all obstacles, knowing that they possessed not only the weight of gold but also the weight of their own indomitable spirits. As the early hours of the morning dawned, a sense of urgency pervaded the mood aboard the USS Trout. With the loading of gold bars moving quickly, Lieutenant Commander Frank Fenno and his crew worked feverishly to solve their critical ballast problem. By 3 a.m., a stunning total of 319 gold bars worth over $7 million had been neatly packed inside the submarine, providing more than six tons of much-needed ballast. However, the significance of this feat went far beyond the simple answer of Fenno's ballast problem. In a stroke of strategic brilliance, the use of gold as temporary ballast provided a dual purpose while also solving another critical concern, the protection of the Philippine gold reserves from coming into Japanese hands. Fenno and his crew successfully avoided the immediate threat of enemy appropriation by creatively repurposing the gold bullion kept on Corregidor, protecting the nation's treasure from capture or destruction. Despite this extraordinary performance, the gold alone was insufficient to meet the trout's ballast needs. An additional supply of ballast was necessary, in the form of 630 bags of money, each containing 1,000 silver pesos. However, time proved to be a difficult enemy, as the massive money transfer could not be completed before the window of opportunity closed. Fenno made the difficult decision to act in the early morning hours of February 4th, with the gravity of the situation weighing heavily on them. He maneuvered his submarine away from the pier and piloted the trout three miles out into the deeper waters of the port, where he decided to submerge. The submarine sank beneath the surface, vanishing from view and finding refuge on the ocean floor, all hidden by darkness. Throughout the day, the trout remained hidden on the port bottom, Sheltered from German observation planes by 140 feet of seawater, Fenno and his crew waited in this hidden refuge until midnight, knowing that their existence rested on their ability to avoid detection and navigate the treacherous waters of war. And as they lay silently beneath the waters, they remained ever attentive, ready to face whatever difficulties arose in their fight for survival and victory. As the moon shed its ethereal glow over the peaceful waters of Manila Bay, the USS Trout reappeared from the depths, its sleek shape cutting through the shimmering surface with definite intent. Awaiting a small boat dispatched from the coast of Corregidor, packed with the remaining bags of silver pesos, the submarine's arrival was a watershed point in the ongoing story of wartime valor and resourcefulness. The events that unfolded in those fleeting moments would soon be immortalized in military history, encapsulated in the final lines of Lieutenant Commander Frank Fenno's Distinguished Service Cross Citation, a testament to the crew's extraordinary mission defined by valor and resourcefulness. With unyielding resolution, they set out to load 20 tons of gold and bullion, as well as securities, diplomatic missives, U.S. mail, and two extra torpedoes, on board the Trout, a tribute to their inventiveness and persistence. With the weight of their precious cargo pushing hard on them, the trout cleared the crowded pier of Corregidor at 0400 on February 4th, ready for the formidable trials that lay ahead. They descended to the murky depths of Manila Bay, seeking refuge from inquisitive eyes and hidden perils, while navigating the dangerous waters under the intense glare of daylight. However, as night once again engulfed the horizon in its cozy embrace, the trout reappeared, its job far from over. With a sense of urgency, 
The crew worked feverishly to load additional securities and mail, therefore increasing the vessel's precious cargo. Each item is a monument to the fortitude and determination of individuals who battle tirelessly to protect liberty and democracy in the face of tyranny and injustice. The trout navigated with precision and purpose through the intricate minefields of Manila Bay in the pitch-black night. The stakes rose with each passing instant as the vessel went into the unknown, confronting the constant threat of hostile observation and ambush. Despite the numerous hurdles that lied ahead, the crew of the Trout remained undeterred, their spirits boosted by a firm determination to bring their mission through to a successful completion. They had traveled the perilous Pacific Ocean for 51 days, demonstrating courage, sacrifice, and unshakable perseverance. As the first light of morning dawned on the horizon, lighting the calm seas of Pearl Harbor, the USS Trout made its victorious homecoming. Their arrival is a monument to the unwavering spirit of individuals who dare to defy the odds and triumph over all obstacles. And as they returned to familiar shores, they did so as heroes, formed in the crucible of war, their legacy inscribed in history for future generations. As the USS Trout approached the end of its historic journey, two days before its long-awaited return to Pearl Harbor, it met with the USS Litchfield, a steadfast escort guiding the submarine and its precious cargo into the safety of home port. This symbolic convergence of naval force highlighted the significance of the Trout's mission, a mission that bore not only the weight of $10 million in valuable goods, but also the hopes and aspirations of a nation in the grip of war. On that fateful March 3, 1942, as the Trout cuddled against the USS Detroit for cargo transfer, the air buzzed with anticipation and devotion. Each gold bar and paper security bore evidence to the sacrifices made in their attainment, with weight far exceeding monetary value. They embodied a nation's resilience and will to overcome the devastation of war. While the circumstances of the Trout's courageous voyage were kept secret for three months, the crew's bravery and gallantry were not forgotten. Lieutenant Commander Frank Fenno, the visionary architect of the bold mission, was at the helm, and his leadership and courage earned him the Navy Cross. However, Fenno was not the only one who gained recognition for his actions. Each member of the Trout's valiant crew, all 70 officers and enlisted men, was awarded the Silver Star, a monument to their unyielding resolve and selfless dedication to duty in the face of overwhelming circumstances. However, amid the excitement and acclaim, a strange anomaly emerged, the mystery of the missing gold bar. Originally listed as 320, it was later determined that only 319 of the $23,000 bars had been transported on the trout. This little disagreement, while seemingly insignificant, served as a poignant reminder of the fundamental uncertainties and dangers of war, when even the best laid plans might be derailed by unanticipated events. Nonetheless, the Trout's golden adventure stood out as a light of hope and endurance in a bleak world, from Woodbury Willoughby's sheepish grin as he returned with the forgotten bar of gold to Lieutenant Commander Frank Fenno and his brave crew, the legacy of their courageous voyage has inspired future generations. We poured our hearts and souls into each frame, hoping to take you on a mesmerizing journey through time. We're glad to hear your opinions. Did you enjoy the video? Was it informative, interesting, or perhaps even inspirational? We would love to hear from you in the comments section below. And, if you haven't already, please consider joining our community by subscribing to our channel, and, if you haven't already, please consider joining our community by subscribing to our channel. By clicking the bell button, you'll be kept up to speed on all of our latest releases, ensuring that you never miss out on another intriguing journey into the past. But wait, there's more. We want to hear from you. Do you have a particular historical topic that piques your interest? Leave us a comment with your thoughts, and who knows? Your suggestion may be the inspiration for our next video. So, friends, when you say goodbye, remember to like, comment, subscribe, and ring the bell. Your support means everything to us, and we can't wait to go on this historic trip alongside you.
Until next time, be interested, stay connected, and continue to discover the treasures of our shared past. Cheers! However, the story of the Trout did not finish with its triumphant return to Pearl Harbor. Commanded by a series of daring and talented officers, including Lieutenant Commander Lawson Red Ramage and Lieutenant Commander Albert H. Clark, the submarine went on further war patrols, leaving an indelible impact on the battlefield and cementing its position in naval history. Tragically, fate had other ideas for the USS Trout. The submarine was lost at sea on or around April 17, 1944, along with 81 members of its crew, serving as a sobering reminder of the dangers of naval warfare. Even in its last hours, the Trout remained a symbol of courage, resilience, and sacrifice, demonstrating the unwavering spirit of those who served their country with dignity and distinction. Though the ocean seized the vessel, its legacy lived on, immortalized in the annals of nautical legend as a testimony to the human spirit's undying strength in the face of hardship. We poured our hearts and souls into each frame, hoping to take you on a mesmerizing journey through time. We're glad to hear your opinions. Did you enjoy the video? Was it informative, interesting, or perhaps even inspirational? We would love to hear from you in the comments section below. And, if you haven't already, please consider joining our community by subscribing to our channel, and, if you haven't already, please consider joining our community by subscribing to our channel. By clicking the bell button, you'll be kept up to speed on all of our latest releases, ensuring that you never miss out on another intriguing journey into the past. But wait, there's more! We want to hear from you. Do you have a particular historical topic that piques your interest? Leave us a comment with your thoughts, and who knows? Your suggestion may be the inspiration for our next video. So, friends, when you say goodbye, remember to like, comment, subscribe, and ring the bell. Your support means everything to us, and we can't wait to go on this historic trip alongside you. Until next time, be interested, stay connected, and continue to discover the treasures of our shared past. Cheers!